This is how I got 700 FPS plus in actual rank and at least 4 to 500 FPS in an actual build fight. I'm going to show you everything which I use personally here on my PC guys in order to boost my FPS and also basically all of the major steps how pros optimize their PC in order to get super high FPS. Everything from this video guys you can find on my official discord or in the link below guys. And real quick guys everything which I use is safe. The only time when I get a false report is if I may be trying to put a CMD into a PS file so I can actually turn it into an EXE. This is why all of the tools which I create myself i'm also giving you as a cmd file besides that you can get everything for absolutely free from the discord in the first place guys i want to cover all of the major ram mistakes there are so many which can literally cost you half of your pc performance if you don't do this right first of all guys i see way too many people who don't know how to utilize the right ram slot especially if you built your pc yourself or sometimes even in preset pcs this is also still a thing that people don't know which ram slots to utilize if you have two sticks of ram guys always make sure that you utilize the first and third slot or the second and fourth never put them next to each other if you have dual channel ram and most motherboards have four slots available never put the ram directly next to each other the next biggest issue is different ram speeds we have so often people will maybe buy one 8 gig of ram and then they buy a second super cheap one of ebay with only 2400 or even lower what your pc is automatically going to do is also slow down the faster ones so you're actually missing out on performance because of maybe five bucks you could have spent additionally and especially in this range between 2400 and 3000 mega Hertz, this can make a huge difference so therefore always make sure that you have the right ram there's also more to it it should be also the same cl which is basically the cast latency this is way too complicated for this but always make sure that both numbers are exactly identical on both ram sticks you know you can just simply take a look at the quick logo which is on every single one of them and if one of them says as an example cl34 and the other one cl30 you know that they're not exactly the same ram speed so therefore always make sure that you have the right matching ram and the first but most important step guys is enabling an XMP profile. So many people have their RAM running just simply you know plug and play not checking if they're actually running the maximum speed which is a Weibull. and for me as an example I built a whole system on a Ryzen 7 5th generation build and my RAM could actually do 3000 megahertz. This was the RAM I had laying around of course for Ryzen you should do a little bit higher as well but I just simply took what was a Weibull. and my RAM had an automatic preset of only 2400 megahertz on Windows 10 you know on a fresh copy and this RAM could actually go up all the way to 3000 and the difference in stability which you get in FPS guys is insane like I could afterwards run actually 240 hertz I made a whole video about this topic already which I'm going to link you in the info icon on the top and as well in the video description so therefore make sure that you check it out guys and once we're now done with the most common RAM mistakes let's move on and we all know guys the most important factor to having zero input delay in Fortnite is having super low ping and that's why not only Mero but even Asian Jeff and many other pros are utilizing now the GR booster you can try this out for absolutely free with the link in the description guys and what this tool basically does is it's going to actively look in the background for the best dns server ensuring that you have the least amount of latency they also have this new feature which is called adaptive intelligent routing which is basically 24 7 scanning all of the active servers in your near making sure that you connect to the one which actually gives you the least amount of ping that's why i'm right now here only on seven milliseconds ping which is insane guys and you can see the transfer is super nice therefore make sure that you try it out for absolutely free with the link in the description guys next up guys we're going to take a look at my own custom tool which is going to be called clean cash and this one you can get from official discord.gg slash the stripes just simply get it from the performance packs channel guys and once you have it right click onto it and run it as administrator this tool literally has everything which you need in order to clean temporary data off your pc first of all we have the normal temp category you know percenter temp percenter the usual things but we're gonna clean that here once in a while you should definitely do this guys in order to speed up your pc a little bit and just clean up a bunch of junk files and next up guys we have prefetch files these you should also clean once in a while you can see now deleted files should be good to go press continue again now we can also actually clean up memory dump files so therefore we're going to click under 7 as well and you can see now memory dump files cleared and we're good to go as well now we also have windows delivery optimization files which we should also actually clean after every single windows update we're going to do this here real quick guys and we can see it was stopped and now they're getting cleaned windows delivery optimization files are cleared so we're going to continue again your direct trader cache might actually sometimes be corrupted causing stutter and low fps in games so therefore it's actually quite important to clean this once in a while guys so therefore we're actually going to do this 
this, you know, then you can see my Shadow Cache was completely deleted. Keep in mind, now that you deleted it, you have to play at least one or two matches of Fortnite so it gets actually recreated again. So this is kind of the same thing as when you have a brand new fresh Windows copy. And now we can actually exit the tool. I would highly recommend you to maybe keep it on your desktop since it is really cool. By the way, the main reason why I actually didn't put it into an exit is that when I try to use this as a PS file, you know, in order to turn it into actual exit, it's gonna get flagged falsely, guys. So therefore, yeah, I just keep it here as a CMD one because of course there is nothing wrong with this file. I made it completely myself. And as mentioned, you can get it from my official Discord. Next up, guys, we're going to take a look at ISLC. And this one you can also get from my official Discord, guys. Again, in the Performance Packs channel. And what this tool does is amazing. You can see, first of all, your total system memory, basically your RAM. For me, it's right now 64 gigs of RAM. And you can see my standby list is already on almost 7 gigs, which means my free memory is, of course, a lot lower. And now if I click on the Purge standby list, guys, you can see that my free memory again gets fully increased because my standby list got completely cleaned. And what this basically means is that all the tools or games which you have running on your PC are gonna fill up over a span of a few hours your standby list. So you can just remember the higher the free memory the better it is. And this tool basically makes it possible for you that you don't have to purge it manually every few hours or even like after one or two hours of video editing. All you gotta do is go here under the list size at least, leave this one here on the default value that is completely fine and then for the free memory is lower than you're going to put it to roughly half of your total memory. So for me it's 32,000 since I'm running 64 gigs of RAM. As mentioned guys this is calculated in Mbits so therefore not gigabyte. So if you're running maybe 32 gigs of RAM you're going to put it to 16,000. If you're running 16,000 which means 16 gigs of RAM you're going to put it to 8,000. It's super easy to set up. You can also google theoretically the exact number. You know 8 gigs of RAM is not completely 8,000 but it's actually 8,120 something I do believe. But for me as mentioned I'm gonna keep it on 32 gigs. Then I'm gonna also make sure that I start it automatically minimized and also launch ISLC on user logon so that we don't really have to care about this tool. It's gonna launch automatically whenever we start our PC and we're good to go. Then the right side we basically have the current timer resolution and this one we're going to put to 0 0.50. So therefore what we're gonna do is replace this with a 0. Here we're gonna put a 5 and we're good to go. Then we're just simply gonna click here under enable custom timer resolution and then here under ISLC polling rates guys you're going to put it to 1000. This is what works the best for most PCs. If you have a super high-end PC you can even try out 500 but 1000 is gonna be the safest value. And then we're gonna click under start and actually minimize the tool. And you're gonna notice that it's right now here in our system tray, which means that we don't really have to care about it. And it's gonna do everything automatically unless we actually decide to change it again manually. Now next up guys, when it comes down to your mouse and keyboard, there are actually also a bunch of options which you have to set up properly. The first thing which I wanna give you as a quick tip is by the way also, if you actually have a wireless mouse, it's gonna perform super bad if you're on a low battery status. So therefore always make sure if you utilize something like a super light or def at a V3, that you actually keep the battery level as high as possible. Next up, we're gonna go here under performance and you can do this for basically any mouse with also clicking on the button, but you should actually play at least on 1600 DPI. And what you can do now is basically just half your sense in Fortnite, but you have a lot more delay guys if you actually play on something like 4 or 800 DPI. This is also where you see all of your favorite pros switching to 1600 or even higher and then just simply calculating what's your in-game sense afterwards. Next up also for the pulling rate, you should make sure to always utilize the highest one possible. So for me, right now on the Dev at V3 Pro, it's actually 1000 Hz, so therefore I'm gonna leave it on that. And I'm also gonna put right now on screen the difference between 125 and 1000 Hz in terms of delay on a mouse. Like guys, it's actually crazy. It's like a bunch of milliseconds, which can really make the difference. Most keyboards, which to all of your favorite pros are using as of right now, have something like this here, where you actually can decrease the travel time before input actually gets sent through your keyboard into the game, or better said, your PC. So I can actually put it all the way up to four millimeters, which means that I have to press down my key four millimeters in order to actually press the key. But now you can see if I put it on the lowest one, it's instantly going to hit that key. So therefore, this one, of course, has a lot less latency, theoretically, if we're going to talk about, you know, how fast you can actually spam your keys. So therefore, this is something which actually all of your favorite posts are utilizing most of the time between 0.1 and 0.4. This is what most of them utilize. But for me, I always keep it on 0.1. Then we have to sync it here with all the keys on your keyboard real quick. And now also on something like the Apex Pro Mini, the Wooting 60HE and the new Razer keyboard, we also have Rapid Trigger, which means that you can wait faster spam keys because you don't have to lift up your key all the way in order for it to be able to again put out an action. So therefore I could put it all the way to 0.1 which means that as soon as I'm lifting off my finger I can again press the same key. For me personally I have it right now here on rapid trigger on 0.4 because other than that it's gonna be a little bit too sensitive and I can't even really like jump in games. So 
therefore I'm gonna sync this here real quick as well with my keyboard. But again, guys, this is completely personal preference. Like I know for a fact that Booga is using actually 0.5 or even one millimeter for rapid trigger. But yeah, guys, actually always make sure that you sync this to your keyboard so that you can actually close the software afterwards. Razer Synapse is actually taking 170 Mbits of RAM, which is quite a lot for just a tool running in the background, which does nothing besides controlling a keyboard and RGB effects. But since we set up everything on the onboard memory, we are already good to go. Another point which is also proven actually is that if you have RGB turned on, it's gonna give you more latency because your keyboard is actually giving way more inputs and a specific controller has to do all the calculations for this or better said your CPU afterwards in the end. So therefore always make sure that you actually turn it off entirely guys, like the whole entire RGB of your keyboard and now we can close the tool. Following settings are so good that I'm getting a thousand FPS while not even looking into the sky. Now we're back in OBS guys, since of course OBS takes a good chunk of your system power, but I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to set up. So basically for me right now here guys, I'm playing on 1920 x 1080p, frame rate of course on unlimited, rendering mode on performance mode guys. If you're on Nvidia and Intel HD graphics, always use performance mode. On AMD on the other side, if it's available, utilize DirectX 12. Then try to up set to 7 guys, and then my 3D resolution, I actually dropped a little bit down to 90 just to give me like a nice little FPS boost. The game literally looks completely the same as you can see in the gameplay in the background. And actually my viewing distance as of right now here is on far. Like on my current PC guys, I'm getting 500 FPS average, even with this one on far. I could get way more if I put it to low, but for me personally, I like this for comp, but of course for maximum FPS, put it on near guys, that's gonna make a huge difference. And then of course, report performance sets should be on disabled as well. Then we're gonna go here next up onto game settings. And here you wanna scroll down all the way until you can actually see this entire replay section here, which you wanna completely turn off guys. And this is gonna give you insane FPS, literally right now here in creative guys. Like I get so nice FPS. You guys have seen the benchmark that I'm literally getting 500 FPS in game. So I don't think I really have to show here anything. Okay, I definitely have to warm up the max a little bit next time. But yeah, you guys get the whole point, right? And next up, guys, we also have to cover real quick the best NVIDIA control panel settings. First of all, guys, we can see adjust image settings. And then we want to click under use the advanced 3D image settings. Don't go on this one, guys, because this one is actually going to overwrite everything which we can actually do here manually. So therefore, select the second one, click under take me there. And now we're here under global settings. And I want you to basically copy all of my settings which are in here. So therefore, I'm going to go through it real quick. Image scaling, we don't want to use for Fortnite. It's not really working well. Ambient occlusion, keep on off. Antistrophic filtering on application control anti-aliasing basically anything which has something to do with anti-aliasing you're gonna keep completely off except gamma correction which is basically lightning in game so therefore you don't really have to care about it the next up guys we have background application maximum frame rate this one is kind of interesting let's just say that you have YouTube running in the background which you by the way never should while gaming because since browsers take an insane amount of RAM but you could theoretically limit any tool in the background to let's just say something like 60 FPS but for me personally, I gotta keep it on off, guys. Then CUDA GPUs, I have on all. Since I only have one GPU in my PC, then CUDA system fallback policy, you're gonna keep on driver default. DSR factors on off. Low latency mode, this one I right now have on on, guys. So many pros are arguing if on or ultra feels better. For me, it's personally here on, on the XL2566 k from Zoe. But here, you actually have to try it out for yourself, which one feels the best. Max frame rate, I have completely on off. Since, of course, more FPS actually give you less delay. Even if you have something like 300 FPS on a 144Hz, monitor people would say you can only see 144 but actually even still having more fps additionally a tiny bit can still result in way less latency multi-frame sample AA, you're gonna keep on off open gl you're gonna leave on the auto settings next up guys power management mode of course prefer maximum performance preferred refresh rate this one we actually have to put on the highest available guys here for shader cache size guys it doesn't really matter too much since yeah it's never gonna get to 10 gigs anyways and with the tool which i showed before guys i would anyways recommend you to clean it once in a while manually then texture filtering antistrophic sample optimization on on, LOD bias on allow, texture filtering quality on high performance of course, trillionaire optimization on on, threaded optimization on auto, triple buffering on off, vertical sync on off as well unless you're playing on actually 60 or 75 hertz. That could actually help you if you have screen tiering. But besides that leave it on off and virtual reality you just simply kind of leave on the default ones which are off for you and Vulkan OpenGL as well on auto. Then we're gonna apply this here real quick then go down to change resolution and here guys I'm gonna tell you please always make sure that you utilize the maximum refresh rate your monitor can actually do. For me it's free 60 hertz so therefore always make sure to put it to the highest one especially also if you maybe apply a stretch resolution but these are the best nvidia control panel settings guys and with that this is everything for this video don't forget to check out the video which i mentioned before where i show you how to actually enable xmp profile and the other one where i show you how to fully optimize windows 11